and welcome back to the Dark Souls playthrough where we just left off we had just killed Havel and went down towards the Hydra to get this uh, knight armor set. I went ahead and edited out a, bu a little bit of footage to backtrack back to the bonfire that we were last rested at and now we're going to move forward uh, into the Undead Parish to get to the Blacksmith and then go after the Gargoyle and get the Firekeeper Soul and uh, update our Estus Flask to plus two and then finally kill bitch ass knight Lautech and get his ring of favor and protection so that we can uh, get some additional health and stamina I'm not entirely sure why I just switched back to the Astora straight sword here I don't know if it was for maneuverability or what uh... See, the, the two-handed sword is not all that great when it's not upgraded yet, whereas the Astora Straight Sword is um, it, it's pretty good because it's a lot quicker uh, right now. Now this Alluring Skull is an item that you can use to uh, lure monsters towards wherever it's thrown to. And that's actually how you can take out the, uh, the, the big armored boar down below. By throwing the Alluring Skull into the fire. And, uh, which is the vulnerability of, of that boar. And he'll run into it and kind of kill himself after a, a couple of them have been thrown. You dumb bastard. Now plus, now that we've got some heavier armor and the big shield, we're starting to look a bit more like a, like a paladin over the default cleric with those stupid robes. You can't really even tell that this is a female. I don't know if the how, how different the uh, male and female armor sets look with this armor set. It looks like there might be kind of a skirt at the bottom, but that may be true of the uh, the male outfit too. So I'm not entirely sure. Sure. It's important to take your time through this area because uh, while these guys can, can uh, seem pretty trivial by themselves, in numbers they can get pretty overwhelming because if one of them hits you, you start to get staggered and then all of them start to hit you and then they can really deal a lot of damage. That mystery key, uh, that's the key that unlocks the cage cell to Knight Lautrec, uh, whom we will free later and then kill. So through this fog door is, is going to be the first time we run we run into the next more difficult type of undead knights. The first time I was playing this game, I, I had an incredible, incredibly difficult time taking these guys down. But you know, as I figured it out, two or three hundred hours later, they're not that that big of a problem. Uh, the one to the right here, you can actually sneak up on if you have light enough armor, which I don't believe that I do here. We'll we'll give it a shot. So we can open with a backstab. Now these dudes with the, uh, what's that sword called, a, a scimitar maybe? Uh, they'll, they'll parry you, so you gotta watch out for that. Now 
Uh, around the corner to the right is a guy with a spear, and then to the left is one of the uh, a dude with a sword and shield. And it's always tough to lure the spear guy out, so I just fucking go in straight forward now and, and just kind of try to pull them both out. This guy's not a problem, especially with the lunge attack from the with with the R2 with the Astora Straight Sword. Just fucks him up. No problem. Opening this gate just allows us to backtrack um, back to the, the bonfire that we started at, you know, the area with the boar. And then that basement key is what's going to open up the next zone after this, which leads us to the Capra Demon, which is on the other side of the bridge of the Hellkite Dragon. I don't have the stats to wield that halberd, unfortunately, otherwise I'd show it to you. friend in here with us. Right. Looks like I picked up a humanity somewhere along the way. Um, as long as you have not killed the boss in the area, random monsters will drop humanities. Once you kill the boss, they, they'll stop doing that though. preparing the right right in front of me here is going to be uh, the next bonfire uh, with the blacksmith and I want to get two humanities like I always do to get myself back alive and kindle the bonfire and then I was using all those souls to get as many souls as I could beforehand I'm not going to spend them to level up but instead I'm going to buy uh, titanite shards so that I can upgrade my two-handed sword to see if we can uh, finally replace the Astora straight sword because it's going to deal significant amounts of additional damage. Um, so it's extra damage it outweighs the, uh, the the slow speed. I'm not going to have enough right away to get it all the way up to plus 5, but I should be able to get it, I believe, to plus 4. And you can just watch as the damage on it just starts to, to grow pretty quickly. Ah, uh, I only got it to plus 3. Damn it. Go get yourself. That's alright, that should be a pretty significant increase in damage now. So there we're dealing 80 plus 80 plus like 30. And here we're dealing about 200, so I, I guess they're going to be about close, damage-wise. Either way, the character looks pretty cool right now with that big-ass sword, the big shield, and the armor. Much better than when we started. God, I love that move. Oh, oh! Oh, you can see the little the purple diamond that appeared under my health bar. That was the the blue ring that I'm wearing. That that goes off when you get under 20% health. That gives you additional defense. Saves your ass sometimes. And you can see this thing's starting to hit pretty hard now. 
Now up ahead here is the fight, the next Firekeeper soul, guarded by a large Black Knight. Who's not a problem? You just want to dodge his uh, his big attacks, and he has you. All, you always have lots of uh, time to do it. There's a big tell whenever he's gonna swing. That armor you can buy later in the game too. I've never actually uh, bought and worn it, but it is pretty cool looking. I think that you buy it in Sense Fortress from the merchant. So that's going to be enough uh, to let me upgrade my sword one more time. I'm going to go do that before we move on. Okay, so now we should be able to pick up that Firekeeper Soul, and then uh, instead of going down to, to upgrade it right away, I think I'm actually going to go up the stairs towards the gargoyles and, and clear that area out. Uh, kill the channeler up there and the, the wave of those those basic undead types, and then free Lautech so that when we go down to upgrade the Firekeeper Soul, I can take Lautech out at the same time. Just kind of save a little bit of time. If you watch my previous playthrough, I, I don't believe that I did that. I believe I took a couple trips up and down here. If you're quick here, you can uh, set the elevator off and then get out right away so you don't have to ride it all the way down. Once you do that once, though, the elevator is available for you at the Firekeeper Shrine, or the Firelink Shrine. <laughs> that dude just got stabbed right in the dick. Like a bitch. The little blue, the blue stink lines on these guys means that that channeler just did his dance move and buffed up all of his allies in the uh, immediate area, so they're all a little bit stronger. I don't know exactly what buff, if it's more armor, health, damage, what, but uh, that's what it means. You know, from far away, lots of the details in Dark Souls look kind of bland and washed out, but if you get in close, like on, a, on my character or on any of the, the enemies, you can actually see they're, they're pretty intricately detailed. You know, I'm almost thinking that I'm going to be in good enough shape to just go straight after the boss without backtracking down to upgrade my Firekeeper Soul and all that jazz first because I've still got seven S's flasks and I'm going to be able to summon uh, Knight Solaire for the fight. And I've got the upgraded weapon, so eh, I don't think I'm going to have to go back down to the bonfire to rest up.
So again, up here is, is Knight Lautech in, in this cell here. And if you free him, he'll be down at the Firelink Shrine when we go back down there. And then once we go down and kill Quaylag, he actually leaves, but he kills the fire the, the, the girl who upgrades your flasks at the Firekeeper Shrine. And when he does that, you can no longer use the, the Firelink Shrine anymore. Uh, but it does drop a black stone, and that black stone can be used later in the game to uh, invade Knight Lautech's world. And once you do that, you can get her soul back. And you can either go to another Firekeeper to upgrade your flask with that soul, or you can bring that soul back to her dead body under the Firekeep Firelink Shrine to revive her, and then you can start using the shrine again. We avoid all of this simply by killing him the first time that we see him uh, back at the Firelink Shrine. The only benefit uh, to killing him later in the game would be that you can unlock his armor, uh, if you're interested in that. But we're going to have better armor than that anyway, so it's not a problem. Plus, it doesn't look all that cool anyway. I think he looks kind of stupid. So here's the summon sign for uh, Knight Solaire. You know, I thought about killing him, but I wanted I wanted to use him in, in this playthrough. Uh, on one of my other Paladin characters, I kind of killed him right away so that I could have his cool-looking uh, Sunbro armor. I might recommend doing that uh, if, if you don't want him to help you. You know, being that I, I don't have internet access when I'm playing this right now, uh, I can't help summon other players to help me with the bosses, so I wanted to have somebody. And for those asking, I'm uploading these videos from work. That's how I don't have internet access at home. You know, that's how, how are you making Dark Souls videos if you don't have internet? Well, that's, that's how I do it. Bitches. One shot! Take the fucking tail off. I was kind of, kind of playing this sloppy. Fucking gargoyle asshole. Ugh, fuck you. All right, now I'll go after the other one. I just love the music in this game. What I, what I think I like about it is that it's so quiet everywhere in the game, except for like the Firelink Shrine, and then you get to bosses and there's just this epic music, so the quiet keeps it scary throughout the whole game, and then you get the fucking epic boss music. So again, this is ringing the first bell of awakening. This is the first story element of the game. You're supposed to ring both bells, and that opens up the doors to Sen's fortress. I'm not sure what the significance of ringing the bells is. Uh, I guess it makes you the hero. I don't fucking know what it means. That's what you got to do to beat the game. You, you ring the two bells, get to Anorlando, get the Lord Vessel, beat the four bosses, kill the final boss. That's what you got to do. Agreed. Now the significance of this guy is that he can actually allow you to, to um, quit your covenant without getting without sins, without sinning. Basically, if you if you join a covenant and then join another one, the covenant that you were in before you essentially sin against. Um, so you lose kind of your, your your status with them. So if you had leveled yourself up to say level two and you sin against them uh, and join another one, it'll drop you back down to level one. Uh, so we're actually going to use him later on as I uh, swap between the different covenants because I don't want to lose my status uh, in them. 
The first covenant I believe that we're going to join is going to be the, the Sunlight Brotherhood, but that's not going to be for a while because I don't have the faith uh, statistic for it yet. But we'll get there. Then we'll go for Dark Wraiths and then the Grave Lord, and then back to Sunlight Brotherhood so that I can basically wear all the gear from all of those and still use the cool Lightning Bolt spell. So uh, you'll see that later. We're going to go back to the bonfire and fully upgrade my weapon to plus five now before we go back down to the Firekeeper Shrine to kill Lautech. Now for me to upgrade it greater than plus five, I'm going to have to get the the, uh, the first ember. I think it's called the, the, the large ember in the depths after the butcher. We'll get that a little bit later, but right now we're at plus five and that should be pretty good for right now. I'm also going to pick up these, these uh, armor box, repair box, and weapon box so that I can upgrade my gear and repair at the bonfires since I had the souls for it right now. And then if I have enough left over, maybe I'll be able to level myself up once more. So now we're going to take that elevator back down to the Firelink Shrine so that we can find Knight Lautech down there. And I'm going to show you a neat little trick to taking him out so you don't have to fight him because he can be kind of uh, tricky to kill. Uh, in my Sorcerer playthrough, I actually just went up against him, I believe. But in this one, you can I'm actually going to kick him off the side and uh, he'll, he'll fall to, a, to just off of the cliff. And when you do that, you can quit your game and reload and then um, his soul will be there waiting that you could grab, which will give you his ring. So it's kind of a cheap way to kill him, but fuck it, he's a bitch. Now remember, I, what we're doing here before we go back to the shrine is, is we're taking this little uh, secret area so that we can get the key that will allow us to unlock a door in the Undead Asylum when we return there a little bit later. That lets us get the, uh, the rusted iron ring that lets us walk on swampy areas, uh, which we need for some zones moving forward. So that's how you get that. So from here, I'm going to work on getting my faith up to 25. And then once I get there, then I can start putting uh, points pretty much solely into endurance. So I may pick up a couple uh, strength here and there. So there's Lautex sitting there like a bitch. So we'll up upgrade that first. All right. If you go up to him, you can either just attack him or try to kick. Oh, he's going to fall up like a bitch. There you go. Reload the game and we'll get our treasure. There it is. Five humanities and the ring, or ring of favor and protection, which again gives us a, a big boost in health and stamina. So now you can see that my um, I can wear 88.2 88 equipment load so I can put on some more of my gear here. Looks like I can wear the full set. Yep. So now I'm in full night gear. With my upgraded weapon and the big shield, we're in a good position for kicking some serious ass real quick here. The only thing I want to do here is I want to kill this fucker because it's like a 3,000 souls. And, you know, he can actually be kind of a, kind of tricky because he'll parry your ass. We'll just see how it goes. You rascal! You will soon regret this! little monkey fucking, fucking him up and he just I don't know he, he can be kind of tricky low level I, I know uh oh
What an asshole. Why can't I ever parry and was it repost? Repost? Oh shit. That is embarrassing. Trying to get some backstabs on him, but he's not he not won it. does is retaliate my shit. kind of not worth the effort because I lost my humanity. I'm only getting a thousand souls out of it. Getting my ass just whooped online. Alright, there we go. So whatever, that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, the next one, we're gonna return to the Undead Asylum to get that rusted iron ring and the crest shield. I'm also gonna try and take out the stray demon while I'm there. Might as well. So I'll have the Titanite slab to get my weapon upgraded all the way to plus 15 when the time comes. So, stay tuned for that. See you tomorrow.